Well, it's uh, Saturday the 15th of April 2023, and this is after the event. Um, I was out preaching the gospel in the open air in Hull again today in Queen Victoria Square. Now, when I was preaching there, um, a, a certain man with some children set up two very large loudspeakers opposite me and um, took out some electric guitars. I was about to start playing when I approached him and said, look, I'm preaching and you mustn't do that while I'm preaching. Now, that's common courtesy in the open air, to which his response was just, well, you carry on preaching and we'll do what we're doing. Anyway, in the end, <coughs> um, it worked out. I was able to carry on preaching for 25 minutes total. He accused me of preaching for an hour and said legally I had to move, which isn't true. Um, and uh, it would have been impossible for me to preach at all if um, he and his uh, children had been playing. They had a very loud rock concert in the city centre, and I've, um, I'll have i put some files just with the music in uh, at the end of this open-air sermon. I was preaching on these words. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And it was quite a few, there were quite a few people listening. But um, what I always feel is this: if we don't if we don't wrestle and fight to a certain degree for <coughs> our place in the city centre, our right to preach, our duty to stand up and declare the gospel, then we'll just get overwhelmed by um, buskers and people with amplifiers these days. It used to be that the police would enforce the law and that people wouldn't be able to use amplifiers in the open air, but now everybody's got one except me it would seem. So today was tough going because of this background electric guitar playing but um, as I say thankfully I was able to preach for 25 minutes. I carried on speaking to some young people and to some Muslims for about an hour afterwards and the recording of the rock music although it was some way away from it was so loud I could hardly hear what the questions were that I was being asked. But anyway by God's grace we have had been able to witness to the truth of the gospel today and we commend the results to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to add as well and as John Hartley has pointed out that yesterday 100 gospels of John were given out by um, John and Susan in the open air here in Hull whilst the preaching went on and this is very heartening, very encouraging and we continue to pray that those gospels, that the word of God would be used and that we read and it would go deep into people's hearts and um, lead them to the Lord Jesus for salvation. Amen. Well, we're back in Hull City Centre, Queen Victoria Square, here on Saturday, uh, the 15th of April. And uh, it's uh, very good to be out preaching the gospel. It's a warm, sunny day with little wind, many, many people around shopping. And uh, so, hope to have a good hearing today. Father, I pray that you bless the reading and preaching of your word. And I pray, Father, that you would awaken the people of Hull. I pray, Lord, that these people would come under conviction of sin and that they would repent and that they would find Jesus Christ pray you'd have mercy upon the preacher. Give me strength of heart. Give me boldness, Lord, in witnessing to the Lord Jesus Christ. Give me courage. Give me confidence, Lord. Give me the unction of your Holy Spirit, I pray, Father, because without his help I can't do anything and I can't accomplish anything and I can't even lift up my voice, Lord. And forgive me for my sins and cleanse me in that precious blood, Lord, because I am a sinner and corrupt and, oh Lord, I confess my sin to you that I am guilty and uh, unworthy of your love or mercy, but I look to Jesus Christ, I look to him alone, I look to him for mercy. I know that my sins are forgiven in him, and I know that I, although unfitted to serve you, Lord, yet will be able to serve you, not by strength or by human um, wisdom, Lord, but by grace alone. And I pray for that grace now, and I pray that Jesus Christ would be glorified and the gospel would be faithfully preached. And this hour I can pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, good afternoon. It's uh, wonderful to be back here to preach the gospel, to preach that Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world, to preach that there is salvation in no other name. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven <coughs> given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the saviour of the world. Jesus is the only one that can save us. There's no one else, nobody else that could take away our sins. Nobody else could deal with the guilt or with the power of sin. Only Jesus Christ could do that. No one else, my friends, could be a sacrifice for sin. God required a sacrifice so that our sins might be forgiven. But that sacrifice must be pure and perfect and holy and spotless and righteousness, righteous and without blame before Almighty God.
And that's what Jesus was. He was born of a virgin. He was without sin. Unlike us, we are sinners by nature. We are sinful creatures. We are guilty before God. We are not worthy of mercy. We are not worthy of salvation. And we are sinful creatures. And we are naturally not, not saved, naturally not in favour with God. We are under the wrath of God. We are under the judgment of God. And indeed, we are lost and ruined and damned on account of our sins. And God looks at the heart and he sees us as we are. And he sees our sins and he says, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. And we are a nation that's forgotten God. England has forgotten God. The United Kingdom has forgotten God, my friends. We've lived for everything except God. We've hated God. We've put away from us the knowledge of God. We have uh, decided that we can live without God. And what do we have? A generation and a nation that is full of wickedness, which is full of evil. A generation which has put away the gospel of Jesus Christ and which has become, therefore, turned aside to every kind of unprofitable and vile things. For example, teaching children in the schools that if you're a girl, you can become a boy, or if you're a boy, you can become a, a girl. Now, what fantastical poppycock that is! What wretchedly unscientific, untruthful lying that is! Nobody has ever changed sex. Nobody can ever change sex. That simply is not possible. If you're a boy, you cannot be a girl. If you're a girl, you cannot be a boy. And you cannot be born in the wrong body. Now this is an example. None of us is born in the wrong body. We're born in the body that God has given us. The right body. We're all born in the right body, okay? None of us is born in the wrong body. If somebody says that to you, don't believe that. It's a lie. A damnable lie that's damning many people in our day and generation. You cannot change sex. You cannot be a member of the opposite sex. That's not possible. But I say this by way of example. We decided that having had centuries of the preaching of this gospel, and having had the Bible at the centre and heart of our nation's life, that we would get rid of it. That we were wiser than that, that we were cleverer than that, that we were more mature. We had come of age as a species, mankind leading himself, mankind being the master of his own destiny. And as I said, we turned aside to foolishness. We became lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, so that people's lives are now measured not so much by who they are, or character, or righteousness, or well, they're standing before God, but by what they watch on TV. And how many series they've binged watch. Is that your life, my friend? You live your life out vicariously, so to speak. You are the hero in the movie. You are James Bond. You are whoever else it may be. But the truth is that that's not who we are. We, were human, we are human beings created in the image of God. You see, that's a, that's a lie when we live our lives like that. You may watch over so many fantastical, amazing, cleverly plotted Netflix um, series. And they may provoke you to conversation with your friends. But that simply isn't life. You see, mankind has come of age and all we've got to stop us from dying in our emptiness, in the void that's in our hearts, is Netflix and other such places. And we have Disney promoting, promoting, promoting its woke agenda. Promoting all of this woke nonsense. We have Budweiser, the, um, the beer which is promoting itself in a most unseemly and uncouth way. Mocking women. Mocking women, mocking biological women, mocking what it means to be a woman, mock, mocking what it is to be female. Well, you see, a, a woman is an adult human female. A woman is an adult human female. You can't get away from that fact. And even the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has recognised that fact. We might ask why Boris Johnson didn't recognise that inalienable fact that an, a woman is an adult human female. No escaping it, no getting away from it, no changing it. A woman is an adult human female. But you see, the Bible says that professing ourselves to be wise, we became fools. And the reason is because we stopped worshipping God and we chose to worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Now you see, 
I will tell you this, while you have some people like Posey Parker, that's Kelly J. Keane, and uh, even um, J.K. Rowling saying it is very bad indeed that men should be allowed into women's spaces and I entirely agree with that. What they are not saying is this, it's not just dangerous, it is a moral outrage. And they can't say that because they also have forgotten the Bible. They have forgotten that there is a moral standard in the world and that this moral standard is set by God in his commandments and that when we say, forsake God's commandments not only do we turn aside to those things which are not profitable and to the madness of idolatry but we turn aside from God, we turn aside and God gives us over. God has given us over to what he calls a reprobate mind in his word. A mind that is unseemly, a mind that is alienated from God. A mind that is not right with God, a mind that is groping in moral darkness. We want to set our own standards, we want to be the masters of our own ship, the captains of our own destiny and we cannot be because God reigns and he is on the throne of heaven. And he has showed us that he has created us for his glory. We were made in the image of God for his glory. Male and female, he created us. So let me say this, it's not just dangerous for a man to be in a woman's space. It is a moral outrage. When did you last hear somebody use those words? Moral outrage. But you see, before God, telling lies is a moral outrage. Before God, swearing is a moral outrage. Before God, abortion is the shedding of innocent blood, the murder of the unborn child. And it is a moral outrage. You see, God is the judge. And God is the one who will judge every single one of us on the day of judgment when we must stand before the throne of Almighty God and give an account to Almighty God for every thought and for every word and for every deed. Now you have an undying soul. So death is not the end. After death comes judgment. And you must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. And you must give an account. Well, being a Muslim won't save you. It won't help you. It won't deliver you. There is no sacrifice for sin in Islam. The sacrifice for sin that God requires... The only way that we can be forgiven for our sins is if there is a sacrifice. And the only sacrifice for sin is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, is the only one who can take away our sins and give us everlasting life and fit us for heaven. You cannot change sex, neither can you be a member of the opposite sex, neither can you be trapped in the wrong body. That is impossible. It is a lie. It is a scientific fraud because it is unscientific. No one has ever changed sex. No one can or could ever change sex. That is impossible. And I repeated that because there's a group of blue-haired people opposite and I'd like them to listen. Jesus Christ is Lord. We are accountable to Almighty God. We are answerable to Almighty God. We must stand before the throne of God. And this is what the Bible tells us about that judgment that comes from God. It says the wicked shall be turned into hell. Jesus, who is seated on the throne of heaven, will say, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And it says, whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's hell, fire and damnation. A real place. Jesus preached on hell more than any man. And he preached on hell because hell is a real place. As the creator of heaven and earth and as the second person of the Holy Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ is also the creator of hell. And he is the one, my friends, who will cast into hell. All judgment has been committed to the Son, the Bible says. Now the Bible tells us that there is one God, but three persons within the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now we can't explain or understand that, but we can believe it. And that is the clear teaching of Scripture. There is only one God. There is, hello, there is only one God. 
There's only one God, but there are three persons within the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is God the Son. Now, we need to turn back to the Lord Jesus Christ. In these days, when we are under nuclear threat, in these days when Vladimir Putin has said that if the war in Ukraine goes nuclear, the first place he's going to nuke is the United Kingdom, we in Hull need to take note. We need to take note that we are not in control of our own lives. Somebody who has a grievance against us and a very powerful military force, Vladimir Putin, and a red button that he can pitch at any time, that somebody, my friends, that somebody... That somebody can push that button at any time he chooses, and when he does that, it will be, we will all be toast. So you see, we live our lives as if there was no God. We live our lives as if there was no death. We live our lives as if there was no judgment to come. We live our lives as if nothing could ever change the world in which we live. We live our lives for pleasure. The Bible says in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We live our lives for those things which cannot help us, which cannot deliver us, which cannot save our souls, which cannot show us mercy, which cannot show us the salvation of God. We live our lives for those things which, my friends, drag us down to hell because there is a wrath to come and there is a judgment to come. And there is a day when God will judge the world in righteousness by Jesus Christ, his Son, the one whom he sent, the one whom he gave, the one whom he sent to be the Saviour of the world, to take away the sins of the world. And we must repent of our sins. These words in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, yeah. and verse 2, John the Baptist came preaching and he said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. God requires repentance. He requires that we repent of our sins, that we turn from our sins, that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. You have an undying soul. Judgment is real. After death comes judgment. And without Jesus Christ, you can never be saved from your sins. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you shall know that forgiveness of your sins. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you, sir, with a guitar, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, don't drown me out, please. Don't drown me out with your guitars and your... Are you um, okay? I'm, I'm on fine. the side, sir. I'm sorry, but, but, um, but you will drown me out with your amplifiers. I can't yeah, compete you with your amplifiers. You can still preach. I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, just... I'm here now. Yeah, how long have okay. you been there? It doesn't matter how long I've been here. No, it's about 45 minutes for a council rule. Uh, no, so no, 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 and we need to hear this gospel in these days. England, the United Kingdom, Great Britain, we need to turn from our sins, turn back to the saviour of the world. Those archbishops in the Church of England need to turn back to God. They have forgotten God. They say, oh, we can dispense with the God of the Bible. We don't need God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, what is the Archbishop of Canterbury doing in Lambeth Palace, my friends? Like you see, the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, the Lord Jesus is that saviour of the world. And the duty of the church, the duty of the church is to preach this book, the Bible, and to declare that there is salvation in no other name but in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one, my friends, who will deliver you from your sin. He is the one who will give you life from the dead and eternal life if you will repent and turn from your sins. Now we live in days when the return of Jesus Christ is very near, so we need to hear this message. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus' return is very near. The end of the age is very near. The Bible tells us that the day will come when all nations will come against Jerusalem and God will fight against them in those days. Now a hundred years ago, hello, we meet again. Yeah, yep. we, 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 hello. 
A hundred years ago, people would have said, well, they saw this in the Bible, but they didn't know how it could happen. But for more than 50 years now, the, the Jews have been in, uh, in Israel, and also they have control of Jerusalem. And Jesus said, no, I'm carrying on. I'm not, don't, don't interrupt me. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jerusalem shall be trampled underfoot until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And some people, and I would probably be among them, would agree that in 1967, the times of the Gentiles were fulfilled biblically, prophetically, showing us that the return of Jesus Christ is very near. But that was more than 25 years ago. And so we are more than 25 years closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ on the clouds of heaven in all that glory that belongs to God. The Lord Jesus, in a minute, the Lord Jesus Christ will return on the clouds of heaven. And if he were to return today and you do not know him, what the Bible tells us is that you will be calling on the rocks of the hills and the mountains to fall on you, to hide you from the face of the... I've got to carry on. I have to carry on. I've got to carry on. So the rocks of the hills and the mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the face of the Lamb. Now, Jesus Christ is Lord. No, not now. Not now. Jesus Christ Christ is Lord and he will return on the clouds of heaven. Are you ready for him? No! We each have an undying soul and after death comes judgment. And this book will make you, my friend, rise to salvation. It will. It really will. But this book will show you what you need to do. It will show you the way back to God. It will show you the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the loving kindness of God. Now, the Bible says that God is long-suffering towards us. And what that means is this. We have had a little time. We have had a little time to repent. And God requires that we repent. But what have we done with that time? We have taken it for granted. We played golf. We have built our mansions. We have filled our bank balances. We have done everything that is unprofitable for our souls. And have we obeyed the commandments of God to repent from our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to the saving of our souls? Have we done that? Well, we haven't done that, my friends. We haven't done that because the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is that saviour of the world who we must find. And we must turn to him and we must believe on him and we must seek him with all of our hearts in order to find the salvation which comes from Almighty God. Now, my friends, what have you done with the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, if we have been given time to repent and we have not repented, what the Bible tells us is that we are storing up wrath for ourselves against the day of God's wrath. One lie would see you in hell. One swear word would see you cast from the presence of God into the fires of hell for eternity. One swear word, one foolish word, one lying word. And you see, my friends, God, my friends, God is the one who will judge us. Jesus Christ is the judge of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who came into the world to take away the sins of the world. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ will save you from your sin. The Lord Jesus Christ will save you from your sin. The Lord Jesus will save you from your sin if you repent of your sin and turn from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to the salvation of your souls. Okay, this is an on, man. This is an on. This isn't how it works. Not in the public sphere. Have we waited, mate? No, 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 no. You have. Yeah, we wait. Don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Look, we don't want to argue. Our kids are playing. I'm not arguing. I know they are. You can wait until I finished, okay? Yeah. You can wait until I finish. Yo, can I ask you a question? No, you can't. Why? So Jesus Christ is the saviour of the world. Jesus Christ is the one who takes away the sin of the world. This is so important. This is what the archbishops aren't telling you. They've taught you to mock the truth. They've taught you to mock the Bible. They've taught you to mock your own souls and your own salvation. And if I asked you to say, well, what about, sorry, what about science? And they would, you would say science. But what's science doing? Look at the weapons in the Ukraine. Look at the science behind those. Look at the science behind the 
Poseidon torpedo with which you and I are being threatened right now by Vladimir Putin. Look at the science that supposedly says a man can become a woman. That science doesn't exist. It's not true. What kind of world are we living in? What kind of lives have we lived? We were made in, by God in the image of God. We were made for the glory of God. We were made to serve God. We were made to seek God. We were made to find God through Jesus Christ, his son. And we need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to turn from our sins and repent. John the Baptist, when he was the forerunner to Jesus, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, he preached, repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And we need to repent, and we need to turn, and we need to seek the Lord Jesus until we find him. And the Lord Jesus Christ will have mercy on us if we find him. And the Lord Jesus Christ will save us from our sins and deliver us from the wrath to come. He went to the cross of Calvary. He bled on the cross of Calvary. He died on the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life on the cross of Calvary. He took up his life again. He is not dead. He is resurrected. He is risen, ascended, reigning on the throne of heaven today. That is the Lord Jesus Christ whom you spurn, whom you turn your back on, whom you will not have to reign over you. Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. And the Lord Jesus Christ will save you forever from all your sin. If you turn from your sin, the Lord Jesus Christ will have mercy on you. If you turn and repent and believe, he will save you. He is not dead, he is risen. But if you will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then he will not save you. Because it is by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. And if you do not know him, your sins remain upon you. And if your sins remain upon you, you are lost and in your sins. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. So we must repent and we must turn and we must turn back. England must turn back. You must turn back. I have turned back. I do know Jesus Christ. I am saved from my sins. I do have that deliverance that comes from God. And I have no fear of death because the Lord Jesus Christ loved me and died for me in my place. That my sins were laid on him. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, cleanseth from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation is yours. Turn from your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall have life to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Father, I pray that you'd have mercy upon these people in hell. Lord, I pray that the loud music that's set up next to me won't take away from what's been preached, Lord. And I pray, Father, that conviction of sin would fall upon this city and that your mercy would be revealed here. Have mercy upon people in hell, Lord, I pray, and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. But it's very difficult because um, I feel that if we don't actually challenge people who actually think... Can I ask you a question? What's your question? If we're going to scream in the town, why don't you just go... Why, don't, why can't you just go to the church and do it there? Like, okay, so is that a question or are you telling me something? No, it's like, why, why don't you just go to a church? Because this gospel has to be preached and I have to tell people about Jesus Christ. Yeah, but, yeah, but like, they, have choice, they, have choice, they have a choice to go to church or listen to it. So it's their choice uh, to go okay, to so, so what do you believe? I believe Allah, Allah. We will okay. read for you, mate, okay? Okay, so I've God been die? preaching for 25 minutes. How can God die then? Nobody. We'll I've, got, I've got it here on record. It's no 25 way. minutes, no okay? Way. You no said 45 no minutes. Simple.